Every day new e-bike models are being released that come with larger and larger battery capacities to keep up with customers' increasing demands for more and more range. But what do you do if you have an older e-bike that works perfectly fine, but the battery isn't providing enough juice for all the distance you need it to cover? Instead of buying a whole new e-bike, one great option is to simply add a second battery to your existing setup. In this video, I'll go over the basic things you'll need to consider in order to start the process of adding a second battery. If you like this video and would like to support the channel, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to have more of my videos sent your way. Let's get started. To add a second battery to your existing e-bike setup, I'd recommend that you first consider these three things. Which battery will you buy? There are several different battery options available. Costs and sizes will vary. Where will you mount this second battery on your e-bike? This often depends on the style of battery that you purchase. How are you going to hook it up into your existing electrical system on the bike? Now I'll dive into each of those things individually, but much of this is intersected, so forgive me if I bleed into one another. Finding the right battery really boils down to choosing how much power that you want to add to your e-bike, the size and design that you're able to use, and of course, how much you're wanting to spend. Third-party batteries are relatively straightforward, and they typically come in roughly four different styles. The first style of external e-bike batteries are sort of grouped together, since they are all very similar, but they do come in a variety of different sizes and shapes. They're extremely common and have come on many e-bikes for years, so you may be already familiar with these types of batteries firsthand. They are attached via a battery tray that is mounted permanently on the frame, so the battery itself is easily removable without having to unhook any bolts or straps. They will usually come with a locking mechanism for securing the battery for safety and theft protection if you leave your bike unattended for short times. However, be aware that these locks are pretty basic and are usually able to be circumvented pretty easily. So if you're going to leave your bike for long periods, I'd recommend taking your batteries with you if you're able. Even if these third-party batteries look similar to the battery that came with your bike, many times they will have different tray connections that will prevent you from simply swapping one battery for another. So you'll probably not be able to simply purchase a similar style battery and switch out your OEM battery for a larger third-party one. The second most common e-bike battery add-on is the rear rack style. I say common, however this is probably the least common of the four. It is essentially a battery that is mounted via a rear rack that is attached to the bike. Adding these batteries can be a bit troublesome since the racks are designed as a one-size-fits-all attachment, so they may not work easily with every bike. Also, many e-bikes are now coming with a rear rack already included, so you may have to do some modifications in order to add this type of battery to your existing rack, or replace the stock rack entirely with a potentially inferior rack in order to make it work. Rear rack batteries do have some advantages, such as when they are done well, they can look relatively seamless, and you may not even know a battery was added just by glancing at it. And if you don't have a viable place to add your second battery, this would take care of that problem by potentially supplying everything you need to get it mounted. The third most common style of secondary batteries come in a large triangle shaped casing. These are great for the large open areas that are common in many standard bicycle frames or moped style e-bikes. These batteries fall in between permanent and removable since they are usually fastened to the bike with several velcro straps so taking them on and off the bike is a bit cumbersome but not impossible. Since they attach with straps the amount of modification that you'll have to do in order to mount one is relatively low but that does mean that it may be more noticeable. The final style of the third party batteries that you'll normally come across is the shrink wrap style. These are simply batteries that don't conform to a hard plastic shell and will be typically found surrounded by bright blue shrink tubing. These styles of batteries are easy to produce since the manufacturer doesn't have to try to fit all the internal components into a particular form factor. However, because of this, they may lack some convenient features that you may want in a battery, such as the built-in LED charge level indicator or a USB charging port that is built into the battery. Since there is relatively little protection for the battery's internal components, it is recommended to place these types of batteries in a cushion bag or some other type of storage area on the bike. So you'll need to take that into consideration as well. Those are the most common third-party battery upgrade options, however there are two more options that I thought I should mention. Many e-bike manufacturers are beginning to provide more OEM battery upgrade options. Electric, for example, just recently released a larger battery for purchase that is compatible with your existing Electric XP 1.0 or XP 2.0 e-bike that will provide more range over the standard battery. Another example is that Magicycle upgraded the battery that comes with their new Cruiser Pro, and this new battery is compatible with the prior Cruiser versions. 
so you can simply buy the new larger battery and add it to your older bike to give yourself more power. The upside to these types of upgrades is that it will be all plug and play, so you wouldn't have to jump through multiple hoops and worry about compatibility to give yourself more battery power. However, the downside is that in many cases, you would only be replacing your existing battery with a larger one instead of adding an additional second battery. So you may only gain a few amp hours, such as in the electric XB example, going from the stock 9.6 amp hour battery to a 14 amp hour one instead, gaining you really only about four and a half amp hours of power instead of adding something like an additional 20 amp hour battery to your bike. Another option that some do-it-yourselfers like to undertake is to forego buying the pre-assembled battery altogether and to build one on their own. In many cases, it can save you some money, and since you're building it yourself, you don't have to worry about a poor quality control from a battery made on an assembly line. But for the most part, I'd recommend just buying a battery that is already good to go from a trustworthy source. Before you decide on a battery purchase, I'd recommend first deciding where you'll be adding this second battery, since much of that decision depends on where you'll be putting it. Figuring out where you're going to mount this new battery and how you're going to attach it can be the most difficult part, since there are a few things you should probably consider. Do you have enough space? Will the battery interfere with the bike's functionality? Where can you put the battery so it doesn't make your e-bike look terrible? Choosing where this battery will mount goes hand in hand with the choice of what battery to purchase. If you want a large battery with a lot of power, you'll obviously need a large area to put it in. If you want something out of the way and discreet, then you'll have to pick a battery that is maybe smaller and less noticeable. If you're wanting to place this battery in a location that doesn't have mounting points, you'll have to find a way to secure it yourself. Many riders decide to attach a second battery to the bike's rear rack, but what if you use that rear rack to halt groceries or children? Adding a second battery there would obviously prevent you from using it. Another popular spot is the bike's down tube, but what if you have problems lifting your leg and need the step through area to get on and off the bike? And if you bought an e-bike that folds, and if you add a battery in the wrong location, you may just eliminate the ability to fold it. Something that will add further complications is that no matter where you put the second battery, you'll have to run wiring from it to the controller, so you have to maneuver that around the frame as well. Once you've decided on what battery you're going to use, and you've picked the best spot to mount it, you will ultimately need to figure out how you're going to connect everything together. You'll need to decide whether you'll want both batteries connected at the same time, or if you're going to switch out from one battery to the other once one is depleted. It is a much more straightforward process of simply unplugging one battery and plugging the other in, but running both batteries at once is the better way to go. Running both batteries simultaneously will translate into slightly more speed and range when compared to running them individually. The great thing about batteries is that the wiring is relatively simple. You don't have to be an electrical genius in order to get one wired up. It's all either positive or negative wires, red or black. The complicated part has to do with the way lithium ion batteries interact with one another. If you simply plug in two e-bike batteries with a basic Y adapter cable, then you're going to run into some problems. The main one being that you'll have to be conscious of the battery voltages to ensure that they are exactly equal when you plug everything in together. If you connect two different lithium ion batteries together that have two different voltages, the battery cells with the higher charge will rapidly discharge to the cells that have a lower voltage and more than likely cause the batteries to be damaged or worse. The easiest solution to circumvent this problem is to use a smart battery adapter or battery blender that will monitor and regulate the voltages of each battery. This can be extra helpful if you plan on adding a second battery that is inherently a different voltage, such as if you are planning on adding a 52 volt battery to your existing 48 volt battery setup. I know of a few of these smart adapters that are currently on the market. One popular unit is by a company that makes the Date X2 adapters, which you can find available from various online retailers like Big Game Bikes or Spark Cycle Works. These adapters are great since they allow for batteries of different voltages and they even have options for more than just two batteries. Keep in mind though, these adapters can be a bit pricey. Another option, which costs a bit less, is the adapter that Area 13 e-bike sells on their site. I've used this adapter and it works great. However, it doesn't allow for the addition of a second battery that is natively a different voltage. I've seen other parallel adapters on online sites such as Amazon or AliExpress, but I'm unaware of their quality level, so I wouldn't be able to tell you if they work well or not. 
With any battery adapter, you will have to consider the types of connections that your stock battery and controller use in comparison to the connections that the second battery has as well. And in many cases, stock e-bike batteries and controllers will come with proprietary connections, such as the round two-pin battery connection that the Rad Power uses. So you will need to change this connection to use it with the dual battery adapter. Most third-party batteries will come with either XT60, XT90, or Anderson connections. But they can be sometimes customized upon request to have connections of your choosing. So I'd recommend reaching out to the manufacturer before you buy to see if they're able to make one custom for you. Or at the very least, they may throw in an adapter for you. Most of the battery blenders that I've seen either come with XT60 or XT90 connections. So keep that in mind when you're planning out how you'll be connecting all these various cables together to work. You can either purchase adapter pigtails, which can be easier but leads to a bit more messy of a wire job. Or you can simply solder on the style of cable ends that you need, which will be a bit more clean looking, but not everyone is comfortable with the soldering iron. Now we've gone over the different battery options, and you've decided on where you'll attach the second battery, and you've got at least a rough idea of how these batteries are going to be able to work together. Now, how do you actually go about doing it? All of it can be a bit overwhelming, so I'd recommend making a sketch or schematic on how everything will be laid out on your bike. This way you'll get a rough idea of what kind of cable lengths you'll need, as well as where things will be connected and exactly how many and what kinds of parts you'll be needing. I will make a part two to this video going over what I did to add a second battery to my Red Expand, and in that video I'll be able to go into greater detail. If you want to see that video when it comes out, please subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified when I release it. As I mentioned before, for the most part, adding a second battery to most e-bikes isn't as hard as it first seems, and if you tackle everything one step at a time, it becomes pretty straightforward. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, and if you have any questions, leave a comment, and I'll try to answer it as best as I can. Otherwise, I thank you for watching, and stay safe.